Hi, welcome to C and C Style Me. We're going to continue part two, honoring our veterans. I want to say hello to everyone and also especially to my brothers and sisters who are veterans and active duty as well and our disabled veterans as well. I'm, uh, as I said, I'm Barbara Whitman. I'm U.S. Army. Major is my rank, was my rank rather, a veteran, because I've served time to no longer be active duty, so I'm with you. How many years? Okay, uh, okay eight years uh, active duty and about 10 to 12 in the reserves. Mm -hmm. And on, on uh, active duty, I made the rank of captain and when I got out of this active duty, I went into the reserves and I made the rank of major. Hi, thank you for all the supporters out there. Um, my name is Antoinette Tidwell and I'm in the United States Army Reserve. I am a specialist and I've been in my term for about three and a half years and three more years to go and maybe a re-enlistment. Ms. Whitman and Antoinette, where did you serve? And so I served, so I served, later on I served on um, U.S. Army Recruiting Command, which was, uh, they had six in the southeast. So I also served at Fort Knox, Kentucky, which was the school, the home of uh, Armor and Armor Cab. Antoinette, where did you serve? Um, I completed my basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and I am stationed now in Arlington Heights Army Reserve Base in Chicago, Illinois. Ladies, what motivated you to join the military? Primarily, I would say the next step transitioning into adulthood. I knew that I wanted something secure for the future, and I took somewhat of a few gap years for school, and the Army, in the midst of me not going to school, the Army was there, and it helped me with getting my own insurance, and helping me with getting my own car, and helping so me with me to join. One was that they, at the time, and I think, of course, they still do, one of the drawing cards was that they would help you with your education. And I knew that after being a, a, working on my master, a bachelor's degree, I knew that I was all out of money. And so with that, and uh, that was one of the reasons. And the other was to actually know that you can work for the government and get a check and get your benefits paid and also the third one was, to tell you the truth, Ebony Magazine did a story back in the day in the early 70s, 72, 73, and the question was on the front of their pages, where are all the black men? And so I'm like, yeah, where are all the black men in one of the places where they were made in the military? And so I thought myself, which was dumb, that I was going to be the research and find all these black men. And uh, so... They were there. How do you handle stress while serving? Yes, um, actually, me and my friend, well, one of my battle buddies, um, when we had to do our time for annual training as a reservist, we pretty much serve one full month in every summer and one weekend in every month. So for our one month, in the summer, we went away to Fort Hunter Liggett in California, and it was really um, a hard time being out there because we were with a different unit that we didn't know, and it, the weather was completely different from Chicago, so the heat was, it was something, and um, we pretty much, to get through the day, we had our 25, 50 meters to, to get through the day for us, and it pretty much, our 50 meter was to go to our back to our tent and read our daily devotions to get us through the rest of the day. If we can just make it 
past lunchtime to break to where we can read that devotion we can make it through the day and 21 days that kept those daily devotions just kept us motivated until it was time for us to go back home what was your life like after service duty service with eight years of active duty having to reincorporate or get back into the civilian life it was an adjustment but what I did because we did get the GI Bill which is the government educational benefits and so we had so many years in which to use that GI Bill educational benefit I used that as fast as I could knowing I uh, uh, applied and was accepted at the University of Chicago uh, at School of Social Service Administration. So I did my, um, I've completed my master's through using the GI Bill, so which they kept their, kept their bargain. We served them and they kept their bargain of, they will help pay for our education. So I did that. And I, of course, I still continue to do some traveling uh, once I came back to Chicago. And so those were some of the things that I did after um, leaving the military active duty. And then I later, um, I, like I said, completed using the GI Bill and I got my master's degree from the University of Chicago. I then later was accepted at, um, I applied for employment with Chicago Public Schools. And I did receive uh, employment with Chicago Public Schools as a Chicago Public School social worker. So I served many um, different schools. As a social worker, I, I uh, serviced K through 12 students. I serviced uh, pregnant and parenting teens. So I had a really, I've had an exciting life, both in the military and out. So it's been a, it's been a really great blessing and a, and a, and a, a good attribute. Antoinette, what were your expectations and were they met and what advice would you give a young adult who's considering enlisting? Yes, my expectations for the Army was met overall that they would help me go to school and they'll help me become an adult, a better adult, a structured adult. And um, yeah, so if you need a path to go on to help you better yourself for the future and as far as resources not being available to you I would recommend that the United States military branch whether it's the Army Navy Marines Air Force they will help you and guide you to actually something that you can benefit from Ms. Whitman, what advice would you give on retirement? I would like you to keep close attention to the paperwork that's kept on, that's kept about you, meaning in terms of your promotions, your um, evaluations, uh, to make sure that no one has the opportunity to discombobulate or not have your records, not having your DD-214, mm -hmm. which is a valuable document that veterans will need in order to access VA, veter uh, the Veteran Administration's benefits. You need that, then I would just make sure that she stays um, energized and Keep an eye on, keep an eye on your personnel officer. Many talk with them, talk with her to see that you are doing the things you need to do to make promotions, and that's very important to to be in in um, contact and relationship with those persons who are keeping track of your awards, your monies, your promotions, so that it won't be a surprise if there's something you need to have done for your record in order for promotion. You will have known. In advance, it won't just come up on you and say, oh, you know, like a stop sign. <laughs> I'm going to tell you there's a stop sign down the road, but I don't tell you till you get up on it, and by the time it's too late, so you're talking about preventions. 
What encouraging words would you like to give fellow service men and women and their families? I would say I'm a woman of faith and I would share this because that's a, it's a very traumatizing event for anyone to lose anyone, whether in or out of the military, but maybe even more especially. Uh, I would ask them to get in a support group. There are now veterans organizations that in each person's, maybe in each person's state that they're in, some are called veteran administration support centers. So there's support if you are able to look and research for it, that will have um, organizations that can give you the support you need or contact you with the support they need if you're still grieving over your loved, loved one. And also I'd like to add, it's not as frivolous when sometimes American people don't really look at the military as who it is and, and that we are life, we are, we are people, we're your next door neighbor, we're your children, we're the, we're the, the postal man. And so we have, a, there's a name, there's a name to the face and not just we lead them to, into the military and that to, to reach out for that support. Realize that I was once young and now I'm old, so I did go in when I was young, and that's what they're calling for because there's a cutoff time, I think age 34, 35, where the military will, you know, yeah. that's it. And so we are going in as babies. We're going in as 17 and 18. And so to know that, and I have to think of this too, I know that these young men and women, there's a saying that some gave some and others gave all. The one who gave all was the ultimate price, which was their life. And when we do stand up, we may not realize it at the time, but when we take that oath, we say we will defend America against enemies foreign and domestic. And each, each man and woman that have raised that and took that oath, there's a possibility, yes, that some of us may not come back. And sometimes when we come back, we're disabled or we've got PTSD. And so I would just ask the American public to realize that these are the people who gave their lives and who said they would. In many ways, some was, some was on the battlefield, some of us were the support. We still serve. For the country, for the better. Thinking back a little bit, um, for families that have active enrolled active enrolled soldiers, it is organization and programs out there for you to moms, uncles, brothers, whoever the primary person for that soldier. You have organizations and programs to help you with your child's health insurance, with their school payments. It's just don't be afraid to ask questions and actually look into it that you do have help with accessing those certain benefits. For your for, support and for the soldiers who have fallen, I have much respect to them and their families as well. And because of those who gave their ultimate, which is their lives, and others who have given and are suffering from PTSD and disabilities and wounded warriors and all those other names we may not know. Uh, I pray to God that they find the healing that they need, both mentally and physically and emotionally. And I thank all the men and women who did serve, who were accepted into the military and say that we will serve our country, which we did do. I just ask that our country remember that and they, they rally for us that we will get the benefits we need because we gave, some gave some, others gave all. And so we thank our American family. I want to say for this Veterans Day of November the 11, 2018, we come boldly to the throne of grace to our Father God who's in heaven. He's the creator. He, he, he created all of us. And Father God, we ask a, not just a special blessing, but that you will walk with the families and the wives and the mothers and the fathers whose children did give the ultimate 
Christ their lives. And we pray, Father God, that you are the Jehovah Rapha. You're the one who heals. You're the one who heals our emotions, our minds, our hearts, our spirits. And so we come lifting up today in every state, in every territory where a man, a woman, serve this country. We ask that you heal those who did serve and did not get the benefits they were expecting, Father God. We ask that you take recompense, that you go to those records and find out what was done and restore unto them, and Father God, restore unto them that which they would do. We thank and we pray for the mothers and the fathers, the sisters, the cousins and the aunties. We pray, Father God, that you will heal them, that you enlighten them. And we pray that all over the country, Father God, that those organizations that are now coming forward for the American veteran, we thank Father God for the young men and women that are going into the military, both active and reserve. We pray right now that you give them the strength and the courage and to be with them. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and we consider it done. And I thank this young woman here that I was able to serve and listen to her story. And I thank God for her. And I pray that whatever she God gives her hands to do, that she would do them and be blessed and be able to serve other people as well. Amen. Amen. We would like to thank Ms. Antoinette Titwell and Mrs. Barbara Whitman for being our special guests in celebration of our Veterans Day. Please subscribe to See and See Style Me.